Hi everyone, I'm Michelle. This is my new webisode series called Inside Alternative. It's going to be about new music, music news, did Dave Grohl break another limb? I will also be interviewing local bands. I'm from the Philadelphia area, go PA. And I would like to interview a bunch of uh, local bands. I already have a few in mind. Uh, also bands from across the country that come locally. Um, I definitely have one in mind. You'll see them sometime in August. But also when I do fun things like I did this week, I was in Cleveland, Ohio for three days for the Alternative Press Music Awards. Uh, the Alternative Press Music Awards took place last night, July 22nd, and I just got back about three hours ago. That's why the light sucks because it's dark outside, and that's why I barely have any voice because I was screaming for the last 72 hours. So I want to start off talking about the pre-show the night before the Alternative Press Music Awards. It was held at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Vinyl Theater opened up for New Politics. Amazing. If you don't know who those bands are, look them up right this second. YouTube them. Download their albums on iTunes. Uh, Vinyl Theater has an album out, Electrogram. It is amazing. You like dancing? You'll dance to this. Uh, Keenan, the lead singer of Vinyl Theater, he does not lack energy on stage. He is jumping from one side of the stage to the other. Their keyboardist literally jumps on his keyboard and throws his legs in the air. I don't know. He's crazy. I've seen him fall once. Just once. But, uh, um, they got the, they got the crowd pumped for New Politics. New Politics is a band from Denmark. I've seen them three times now and I am blown away every single time. It's a different show every time. Boyd, their lead singer, dances better than I do. They have a great guitarist. His name is Soren. He was sweating pretty much the instant he got on stage, but no one minded. Uh, it was an amazing way to start this day, this week in Cleveland. I really thank you guys. Thank you, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, for making this happen, and Alternative Press Magazine as well. Um, I'm going to talk about the second day. Yesterday was the Alternative Press Music Awards. <clears throat> but started off the day being able to go to um, a lecture series. Uh, at this hotel where most of the celebrities were staying. But uh, this lecture series included Lizzie Hale of Hailstorm, Cody Carson of Set It Off, Buddy Nielsen of Senses Fail, and Dan Campbell of The Wonder Years. Yes, I do have notes that I'm reading off of because there's way too much to just memorize all this stuff. So this lecture series was about songwriting and the art of songwriting, and there was about 30 people in attendance. Uh, I was lucky enough to... Um, sit right next to Lizzie Hale before it started. Lizzie Hale was there with Joe Hottinger of Hailstorm. He's the guitarist. And it was pretty amazing. I tried not to fangirl. I fangirled a little bit. Sorry, Lizzie. I said the word selfie in front of you. Embarrassing. But, um, it was great. I got to talk to Lizzie about how she felt about being invited to the Alternative Press Music Awards this year. She said it was a little bit out of their comfort zone. It wasn't exactly the scene they're used to, but as she said, hell, she's done a country tour. Yeah, she toured with Eric Church. If you're a country fan, you know who he is. If you're not a country fan, don't bother looking him up. Um, but they started off introducing themselves. So a little bit about Lizzie. She started her band Hailstorm when she was 13. She started with her brother, RJ, who is still the drummer. Uh, but she didn't start co-writing songs until she was in her 20s. Cody Carson of Set It Off wrote his first song at 18. Buddy Nielsen of Census Fail was there, just like I said. And Dan Campbell of The Wonder Years was there, whose new album comes out uh, September 4th. It's called No Closer to Heaven. Uh, they started talking about their starting points when they write songs. Buddy from Census Fail, he said, I started meditating and it changed my whole approach to songwriting. He opened up a lot about... Um, where his band has taken him throughout the years. And he's gone through a lot of changes. He used to be an alcoholic. He just recently came out as um, gay. So he's going through this emotional roller coaster and he wants to share that with his music. Dan from The Wonder Years, uh, he likes to jot down little notes when he starts writing songs. It's, he said it starts with a line, starting with a lyric, and a lyric starts with a feeling. That's an amazing way to put it, Dan. I'm pretty sure we've all had those times where we thought, man, this would make a good song title, or this would make a good start to a chorus. I don't personally write songs, because if I tried, it would be horrible. 
but anyone who's a songwriter would be able to agree with that. Lizzie and Cody both said they've used their voice memo apps on their phones. Cody said, don't sit next to him in a music theater because, um, or a movie theater, I'm sorry, because he will whisper into his phone when he has an idea. And Lizzie says that she's been caught in the bathroom singing into her phone. So <laughs> if you ever hear someone singing in a bathroom, perhaps it's Lizzie Hale. They asked the, uh, the songwriters what they do about writer's block. Buddy from Census Fail said that he's going to write it now, and he's not going to think about it, and when it's done, it's done. Pretty much just let it all come out. Don't think about it too hard, or else, you know, you're going to get blocked. Uh, Dan from The Wonder Years said that if he ever gets stuck, he just takes a shower, or a long drive, a bike ride, any place where nothing can distract you, which I believe is pretty good advice. Cody from Set It Off says that writer's block is just self-doubt. Let the thought vomit happen. Let it come out and finish it. Now, Lizzie Hale, I think she took a little advice from Shia LaBeouf. She says, just do it. Even if you think it sucks, finish it. Which, I mean, makes sense. Don't just leave the song halfway through or three quarters of the way through. We finish it. Um, she says that she walks away and stops thinking about it for a while if she gets writer's block. She also has tried free writing, which is basically you, you pick a subject and you just write about it. If you if you mess up, you just keep writing. You don't erase it and you don't go back to what you said. You just keep writing and you don't stop. So they also discussed with some of the artists about changing styles. Lizzie has definitely changed her style over the year. Uh, this last album that came out, Into the Wildlife, uh, from, Hail from Hailstorm, had a little bit different of a feel. Um, it was leaning towards country, and it could be the fact that she did do a country tour with Eric Church. There was a lot of country influence in her life re recently. But what she said was that she, the band kicked everyone out. There was no outside influence from managers or, you know, PR. They kicked everyone out, and they did what they wanted. She said, you have to love what you do. If you don't love the songs you're writing, and you're writing them for someone else, it's just not going to come out that it's not going to come out great. You're not going to want to perform them, and then your performances are going to suck. Basically. But everyone seemed to agree with Lizzie. Buddy from Census Fail said he would rather be poor playing the type of music he likes than playing music for other people. Makes sense. Uh, Cody from Set It Off even referenced his new album. Uh, they said that they threw everyone out and they became selfish. Basically, they did what they want. Screw everyone else. They're not going to write a song for you, for their manager. They're going to write a song for them and their fans. It's it's what they have to do. My favorite moments from this uh, interview and this, this panel of songwriters was <laughs> Dan from The Wonder Years kind of showed how deep in a hole he is, <laughs> not really connected with the mainstream music. Lizzie Hale said that her managers at one point tried to tell her that she had to write an Imagine Dragons song. I love Imagine Dragons, love Hailstorm, that could have been interesting. But she said once the Imagine Dragons song they wrote, they didn't like, and they produced it, once it came out, it wouldn't be relevant. While she's explaining this, Dan leans over to Buddy and says, what is an Imagine Dragon? And, and Buddy says, it's a band. And Dan looks into the audience and goes, Imagine Dragons is a band? Dan, they are a band. They're from Vegas. Look them up. Educate yourself. Um, Buddy was really great about opening up about his past, what he's been going through recently, with his band, with his personal life. He said he wants to write songs that are emotionally disturbing, where some of the, some of the people there might not have understood what that meant, but he explained it and I completely understood. He wants to evoke emotion, not necessarily freak you out. He wants you to feel something from his music. And Cody sums it up greatly for everyone when he says that he is in love with songwriting. So that's the highlights of that panel. It was great. Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm, Cody from Set It Off, Buddy from Senses Fail, and Dan from The Wonder Years. Dan also talked about how he has, like, an, he has another band, but his band is like a different character, almost like he has an alter ego. I'm definitely interested in starting to listen to that band. I'm pretty sure I'm going to look them up as soon as I wake up tomorrow morning, but I'm exhausted and after this I'm going to bed. Uh, so after that, got some food and then it was time for the big show. 
Um, first there was the red carpet, uh, which I couldn't get near, really. I squeezed through for Hailstorm so I could say hi to RJ, since I didn't get to meet him before. Uh, he was excited someone knew his name. Like I said, they were kind of out of their element where they were. The Alternative Press Music Awards, let's just get through with who won. I'm, a, I'm very sad 21 Pilots didn't win anything. They were up for three different awards and got nothing. Happened last year, happened this year, not going to happen again next year. So, list of winners. Best Vocalist was the first one given away, and that went to Haley Williams of Paramore. Best International Band was the 1975 I Voted for New Politics. The Icon Award was presented to the band X. They were awesome. They looked like it, they rock and rolled really hard in their days, but they were very accepting. Of, they were grateful for their award. The Vanguard Award, uh, Rob Zombie. You deserve that because you're awesome. You came out and you performed with Motionless and White. You crowd surfed. You might be the most energetic man with dreads I've ever seen in my life. The Best Basis Award was presented to Zach from All Time Low. Zach and Alex from All Time Low did host the Alternative Press Music Awards. I'll talk a little bit, that, a little bit about that later when I talk about my favorite parts because it got a little shady there. The Artist Fl Philanthropic Award, excuse me, was presented to Taking Back Sunday for their work with the American Cancer Society. I am a proud volunteer with the American Cancer Society, and I voted for Taking Back Sunday, and I'm super glad they won because the American Cancer Society got all this recognition because of it. The Best Live Band, I voted for 21 Pilots, but um, A Day to Remember won. I have to say I have seen them live. They're amazing. They deserve that award. Still wish 21 Pilots won it. Best Fandom was Five Seconds of Summer. Also an award 21 Pilots was up for, and I think 5 Seconds of Summer did not deserve to be there. Sorry, guys. Um, best music video was Drown by Bring Me the Horizon. I did get a chance to watch it. That definitely deserved that award. Uh, song of the Year, I voted for this one, Kick Me by Sleeping by Sirens. It's an amazing song if you haven't heard it yet. The best underground band is Being as an Ocean. I haven't actually heard about them yet, I guess because they are an underground band. So I'm looking forward to looking into their music, and I'll let you guys know a little bit more about how I feel about them. Most dedicated bands, All Time Low, which are called The Hustlers. The Skeleton Click, which are 21 Pilots fans, were up for that award. Very sad we lost that. I still think we kind of won it, but we just didn't get the actual award. I'm not biased at all, by the way. The best guitarist was Tony Perry of Pierce the Veil. I have to agree, he is very skilled with the guitar and probably deserved it out of all the people who were nominated. The bake breakthrough band, which is actually really funny, is Paris. I've been pronouncing it Pivris this whole time, and then Jack and Alex made fun of people who pronounce it that way, but their A is actually an upside down A that looks like a V, so please do not make fun of me for that. Artist of the Year's Issues. I totally agree. They're a great band. They sing about great things. They are emotionally disturbing, and they deserve that so much. Album of the Year was Black Veil Brides by Black Veil Brides, and they put on an amazing performance last night. I'm definitely going to listen to them a lot more than I already do. Let's talk about the special performances. These were the highlights of the night. My favorite, Brendan Neary of Panic at the Disco, performed Bohemian Rhapsody. I mean... I had people who told me that he sounded horrible, they were watching from home. I don't know about you, but from where I was sitting, he sounded amazing. If you haven't seen Brendan Neary on YouTube performing Bohemian Rhapsody, look it up right now. Right now. Like, stop this and look it up. Because there is nothing better you will see on the internet. I mean, you probably watch at least 12 hours of cat videos a week. Don't lie to me. I know you do. Look it up. Simple Plan came back after a four-year hiatus and rocked the house. It was incredible. My little fangirl went nuts. Sum 41, you know, the Canadian band from the 90s that no one remembers anymore, brought out the alt girl in me. I went hard. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't expecting a huge performance, but DMC also came out and uh, joined them on stage. So dumb D is dumb. <laughs> I can't even say it. Some DMC forever. That was the hashtag going on last night. Hailstorm started off with Love Bites. Great choice, by the way, guys. And then Corey Taylor Slipknot joined her on stage for a special cover of I'm Going Hungry. It was 
an amazing night. Everyone was singing along. It kind of just like gave you the chills and you felt like one big happy musical family. It doesn't matter who you voted for that night, you were one person. Speaking of badass females, the lead singer of Paris killed it and was joined by Tyler Carter on stage of Tyler Carter of Issues and they sang her new hit My House, which was nominated as Song of the Year. And then Weezer closed the night with can you, can you guess what song? Buddy Holly, that's right. An amazing end to the night. It was incredible. But one thing I want to talk about, the Alternative Quest Music Awards, and what's trending on Twitter right now, I'm actually going to look up some of my favorite tweets about this, is um, Alex and Jack of All Time Low pretty much had a sarcastic comment about every band that came on stage. It was funny. None of them were too offensive, if offensive at all. And excuse me while I look up these tweets. And it's sad because not everyone could take it with a grain of salt. There was somebody who came up on stage and and decided to tell them how they felt about All Time Low. And if you don't know who that is, it's Cherry Cyrus of Metro Station. Um, let's see. Petition for All Time Low to join Warped and play on whatever stage Metro Station plays. I'd pay extra to see that. Uh, Trace Cyrus, Billy Ray Cyrus' son, uh, said that he was extremely pissed off at All Time Low because um, they were making comments and they were being disrespectful to the bands that they toured with and they just threw shade all over All Time Low. And uh, I'm looking at these tweets and none of them are all that great. I found one. Okay. My favorite one, I can't find it anymore, but somebody posted that Trace Adkin Trace Cyrus uh, had an achy breaky heart after all the shade all time, th all time low was throwing at them. So sorry Trace, but you are officially associated with your dad again. Um, I don't listen to Metro Station, I listen to All Time Low, and I definitely don't want to listen to Metro Station because throwing shade is just not cool, especially on live TV, and you got booed off stage anyways. So, um, Alex and Jack took it very nicely though, uh, they actually apparently had a nice conversation backstage with Trace and they felt heartfelt after it, um, but apparently that actually turned into almost a physical altercation. So. Uh, that is the wrap up about the Australian Press Music Awards. I told you a few bands that I wanted to take a look at after hearing about them this weekend or seeing them or talking to them. So I'm actually going to be doing that tomorrow. I will be posting a video on Saturday um, explaining exactly what I think about these new bands. There will be three new bands and they will be announced Saturday morning on my Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope. All the same name. It's Shellbell. And Shell has six L's in it, so S H E L L L L L L Bell. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is my first one, so I, I'm sorry if I said um like eight times in five seconds. So have a great night, guys. I'm going to bed. I'm exhausted. The Alternative Press Music Awards was amazing, and I look forward to sharing this webisode experience with you all.